Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to use the Knit Collection filters from Lightroom. Let's start by opening a single image for editing using analog effects. I find the easiest way to do this is by selecting your image in Lightroom and then right clicking on it with your mouse. This displays a pop-up menu where you can select the Edit In option. You can then see all the Knit Collection filters and select the one you want. Next, you'll see a dialog that confuses a lot of people. Now this is a Lightroom dialog and it's not part of the Knit Collection. It's where you can select the editing options for the image you want to create. In this example, you can see only one of the options is enabled and we're being forced by Lightroom to select this. This is because we're editing a RAW file and Lightroom needs to convert this to an image before we can edit it with the Knit Collection. When you're using this option, you can also configure the Copy File options at the bottom of the dialog. These control the characteristics of the image that are going to be created by Lightroom. When you're using the Knit Collection, you need to select either the TIFF or JPEG file format. There's also a PSD format, but Nick's not compatible with that. You can also select the colour space for the image. If you're unsure about this, pick the Adobe RGB. This gives you a wide colour space to use for your editing and it's going to be able to handle most of the colours. If you select the TIFF file format, you can also set the bit depth to either 16 or 8 bit. We're going to be using 16 bit as this helps preserve the image during editing. Further down the dialog, you can also set the resolution or number of dots per inch in the image. We'll set this to 300, which is generally accepted as photo quality resolution. When we've selected our settings, we can click the edit button. Lightroom's now converted the RAW file to a TIFF image and opened this in NIC for editing. Once you've made your adjustments, click save to return to Lightroom. Back in Lightroom you can see the new image has been added to the Lightroom catalogue. Also an image stack has been created to group the new image with the original. Let's now try to open our new TIFF file in another of the Nick Collection filters. This time you can see the two other options in the Lightroom dialog are available. We can still select the Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustment. This will create another copy of the image and apply the, any subsequent adjustments that you've made in Lightroom before passing it all to Nick for editing. We can now though select the Edit a Copy option. This creates a new copy of the image but doesn't apply any adjustments you may have made in Lightroom. Finally, you can select to edit the original image. This opens the image and allows you to apply further edits to it. This is the only option that doesn't create a new file, but you need to be sure not to make any mistakes if you're going to use this with multiple NIC filters. Notice also that the copy file options disabled when we select to edit in the original image file or edit a copy of the image. The options are only available when we select this Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustments. If you find that changing these options gets a bit repetitive, you can actually change the defaults. You can do this in the Lightroom Preferences using the External Editing tab. Select the application you want to change the configuration for in the drop down list. You can now change the default options that will be used each time you edit an image with that filter. Let's change this one to use the Adobe RGB color space and a resolution of 300. 
Once you've made changes, you can use the drop down options to update the preset. Now when we edit an image from Lightroom using this plugin, the new defaults appear in the edit dialog. The other useful feature that we've seen when editing our photos is that the new images can be grouped with the original using the Lightroom stack feature. This is also controlled from the Lightroom preferences in the external editing tab. When you have this stack with original option ticked, each new version of an image is going to be added to the stack with the image it was copied from. This is a really useful feature when you're using the Nick collection from Lightroom because it keeps the different versions of the image together. Another Lightroom feature you might not be aware of is that you can select and edit multiple images together in a Nick filter. We can select two images by holding down the command or control key on your keyboard and then choosing each of the images. Now you can choose to edit them from the pop-up as you did before. Notice this causes two new buttons to appear at the bottom of the interface and you can switch between the two versions of the image. You can also apply adjustments to each of these. Once you're ready, you can save all the images using the Save All button. Again, the new images are added to a stack to group them with their originals. All the filters of the Nick collection can be accessed using this pop-up menu. The exception is HDR effects. To open an image in the HDR effects plugin, you need to select the export with preset option from the file menu. This is where you'll find the HDR effects pro option. You'll notice that once the image has been edited, this time it's not grouped with the original image stack. If we go back to the Lightroom preferences, you'll also notice HDR effects filter isn't listed as an external editor. We can though add it by creating a new preset. Now we're able to use HDR effects from the pop-up menu. The only difference you'll find is when you come to save the image. It won't automatically use the same location as the original file and the file name has got HDR appended to the end of it. You'll need to manually save this image back to the same location as the original image file and this will overwrite the image that was created by Lightroom. If you don't actually do that, the new image in the Lightroom stack won't reflect the changes you just made in HDR effects. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a big thumbs up to like it and share it with others. I've got lots of new tutorials coming soon, so don't forget to subscribe or you might miss them. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, see you in the next video.